We are live at VMP Performance in New Smyrna Beach with the Burnout Box Show. Justin and Donnie, what do we talk about on the show, Donnie? Whatever we want. <laughs> Usually yes. horsepower. Usually horsepower. <laughs> yes, lots of horsepower. Yep. All the horsepowers. All of it. Like a thousand of it lately. Ooh. Why can I hear Justin? I already heard him say all this. Come on. Stop. Audio check. Is our audio working? Yeah, it's working. <laughs> okay. We've got 36 people live on uh, Facebook. How many people do we have on YouTube? We have 25 on YouTube. 25, all I'm right. I'm Insta-famous. <laughs> That's it, I'm Insta-famous. I'm calling it. <laughs> so if you like our show, or you think you're gonna like our show tonight, just go ahead and share it anyways. And uh, <laughs> share it with your friends, share it on your personal page. Help us get more viewers. We're going to talk about a lot of important things that your grandmother really needs to hear. I promise. Yeah, you need to says, share this. Alex says, don't worry, spill the beans. Don't worry, spill what the beans. beans. He says, no waiting on results. Get to them immediately. Give people what they want. Give people what they want. So we've been on the dyno um, earlier, making some dyno polls and stuff. All day. Yeah, but we'll get to that. Oh man, we're up to 50 viewers. Oh yeah. I don't That's know. awesome. These people are way too we, excited to see my face. We tease people with dyno results and they just jump on and watch. Yeah. So, um, I, I, you know, I, I think we've got a few other things before we get to these uh, dyno results. Just a few things, guys. Sure. We got to tease them a little. So, um, one of the things that I haven't, ch ch haven't had a chance to mention to you, Donnie, um, something really bad happened yesterday. Okay. Um, one of our friends in the industry, another Alex tuner, says no. racer, he passed away. And uh, it's uh, affected a lot of people um, very, very badly. So that's a very sad thing that happened yesterday. And uh, I just wanted to mention that. Sorry, Alex, but uh, it's, uh, it's been on my mind a lot. Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, that's why we didn't get on the dyno yesterday afternoon. Yeah, I really um, understand. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, we had a great weekend of, uh, of racing um, at Bradenton. You weren't there, but the I rest of there. us were. That was like the first event I think I've missed. I didn't make it to American Muscle last year. Because I think I went to an event right before it and then right after yeah, it. So I, just, I missed American Muscle. You just though. started working for us back then, too. So No? Yeah, all right. You've been here a few months. Three, like, four months. I'm way closer to a year than you'd just probably, starting at this point. You'd probably live here if you could. I would. <laughs> the RV's nice. I, I really I like it, the <laughs> RV. I would live in it. Oh, man. We'll talk about rent after the show. So... The race last weekend at Bradenton, um, we had uh, one of our customers um, did an awesome job and won the modular muscle class. You guys got some uh, B-roll on that? We'll wait while he pulls that stuff up. It was pretty cool because actually very recently, uh, I, don't, I don't know when, a month ago, two months ago maybe, I just put a blower kit on that car. He, he brought it to us completely bone stock. Stuck it on the dyno. I dynoed it beforehand for him. I want to say it made 347. It sounds right for an automatic. Yeah, that was an auto, um, 12 or 13 car. But other than that, bone stock. Well, it is bone stock, period. It was bone stock. Stuck it on the dyno. It did 347. All we did was a VMP stage one with upgraded heat exchanger. And I think, I don't remember if we did fuel pump voltage booster for him or not. Did we, we? Threw a, we threw a voltage booster on it, and he had a Cobra Jet 65 throttle body laying around. Yeah. So we yep. threw that on there, too. Yeah. And then he goes out, and he, he wins his class in the first freaking race that he runs. Yeah, and the car actually went a high 10, uh, I think a 10, 9, 10, 8 one morning, oh, uh, yeah. 129 miles an hour. This is a Gen 2R, um, and uh, it made just over 600 at the wheels on the dyno. Yeah. Um, so... And that's actually, that car's going to be featured in a story with Evan, uh, written by Evan Smith here, um, in an upcoming uh, issue of CarCraft Magazine. Oh, sweet. Yeah. I get to see a bunch of pictures of my hands. He took at <sighs> least, I want to say at least 100 pictures of my hands just working on things. You're not going to see my face in one single shot, but my hands are in at least 100. And he did tell me that I have a future in hand modeling if this didn't work out. So I have that to look forward to as well. He tells everybody that. That's not true. <laughs> but yeah, no, congrats to Kevin. Awesome. Um, let's see, whatever. Hey, Kevin's, Kevin's commenting. Hey, Kevin's Sweet. What's watching. up, Kevin? Sweet. We're talking about you. you might, your ears must have been ringing. You signed on. John, John, we're going to get to that in a little bit. And uh, Tom, 
We're not sure yet. We'll announce that when uh, when we're there, but we will definitely be there in a big, big black uh, motorhome, the Death Star, and Death uh, Star. a huge stacker trailer. So, <clears throat> uh, other news at Bradenton. Alex ran a 9.3 at mm. um, some awesome mile an hour with a uh, Gen 3 on low boost, full weight street car driven. I was going to say that he drove to the track, raced, and then just drove home yeah. like his daily commuter. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, really, it, it really is kind of his daily commuter at times. He drives it up here. He and drives he lives, it to the shop, yeah, 150, 200 miles away from where he lives. He drives it up here, stops at the racetrack in Daytona where there's Z85, and that's his street car with... Um, how much power is that thing put down, ballpark-ish? Uh, you know, it's in the it's on low boost right now. It's a 75 millimeter pulley, so I think it's um somewhere in the 800s. Yeah, but still, it's, it's nothing <laughs> yeah. crazy. Oh, okay, just in the 800s, nothing crazy, guys. There's like half the people watching this drive their stock Ford Fusion with 200 horsepower that they probably think's okay, and you're over here like, oh, okay, just 800 horsepower, it's nothing, whatever. So Joe says, if you don't have a job in hand modeling, you'll definitely have a job in plumbing. Oh, oh shit! I don't know why he said that. I've been waiting for that joke because I mean I see it all the time. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> yeah, listen, guys, you can't tell by um, where me and Justin's heads are at, but I'm actually six foot seven. So um, the regular extra large T-shirts that fit me this way don't fit me this <laughs> way. So sometimes I may appear to look like I'm a slight bit of a plumber. And you guys were talking about Alex's car. He jumped in uh, eight sixty. And, um, 860. 860, and Alex also says, hi, crack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Luke, who said hello earlier from Joliet, which I like Joliet. What did I try up there? Jimmy had me try some food. Oh, what the hell was that restaurant? That was the, the wet beef. The wet, yeah, they, the stupid sandwich. They dunk the whole thing. That's that awesome. I tried that in Joliet. It was good. Italian but, um, beef, Luke wet. Luke says, does Donnie watch Talladega Nights in the RV? Every day, actually. I was going to say, I can really start doing a lot of quotes. The and, problem is a bunch of them have a lot of cuss words and, in them. And there is a Talladega Nights uh, DVD in the RV because yeah, is. that is one of Rebecca's favorite movies. It's an amazing movie. Talladega Nights, Days of Thunder. Like, I could watch those two back to back to back all day. Uh, so, let's see. We also ran uh, Rebecca's car at Bradenton. We've been fighting some converter issues, but we got some more data points, and we're working on getting that thing dialed in. Um, it'll be a Texas 2K. It's got an entirely new look. I was gonna say it looks pretty. It yeah. looks a little different. Yeah. So that'll kind of uh, you got to put some body parts on it tomorrow put and it all back um, together. yeah, put it back together and and that'll kind of be debuted at Texas 2K. It looks pretty. <clears throat> Steven says, you know, you got me jealous. Maybe I should have waited for a VMP Gen 3 instead of a Hellion Twin 55S. Y'all putting out some numbers. Hey, you can always Stay switch. <laughs> yeah, but. I mean, we tune Hellions. I think we got one of them in the shop right now. We do. We, we do not discriminate against horsepower. Yeah. Wherever it comes from, we like it. We do like our own supercars. I was going to say, we, well, lot, I mean, though. we like ours best. But, but yeah. You know, if you got an 800 horsepower Mustang, we'll still give you a little respect. Uh, let's look through the comments. Let's see. Kevin said, thanks for the love. No, thank you for the love. You're going out running the blower kit I put on, making me look good. Thank you, sir. Um. Evie says, Roar, uh, your daughter's trying to scare me again. Evie, you need to stop it. You got way more comments than I do for some reason. There's a I think it's because I introduced myself last week as Donnie Duffy, president of VMP. No, no, no just no, on no, your no, Facebook just... feed. You oh. might have to refresh your page, Justin. Yeah, see if Amana I... says, uh, quit the stalling and give us what we want. Oh, all well. right, all right. But, uh, there's, you have a whole bunch of kind of comments here on Facebook that might be you might want to look at. Uh, Alan says, Justin, with a Gen 3 on an 03 Cobra, will a Dragon Throttle body be restricted? So, Alan, um, it's going to depend on boost level. Uh, up to about 18, 20 pounds, you're going to be okay, but you go much larger, and it, it is going to start to be a restriction. Oliver says, what is the best add-on for wheel hop on a 17... BMP or Steeda? Um, so VMP does tuning and supercharger. Steeda does a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. I don't understand that question. Um, <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> don't do too much to the IRS. You can bind stuff up. You can cause problems. Um, so that's my suggestion on wheel hop. John says, want to order my VMP Gen 3 for my Trinity. Which CAI to order? Uh, <clears throat> John, um, we're, uh, we're actually going to be testing some uh, bigger induction parts on the GT500 tomorrow. Um, but if you've got a Trinity car, you've already got the 5.8, um, it already came with the 2.3 TVS, 
if you're going to make over, if you want to make over 800, 850, I would definitely do a 148. Yeah. If yeah. you're Coates commented in saying, glad we can have all the horsepowers here in Australia now. We got our delivery. Awesome, yeah. Matt. Good to hear. Yeah, man. I've got so, Matt's Matt. got some special stuff down under. Down under. <laughs> Matthew um, Gordon said more truck content. Matthew Gordon, I like talking about trucks, so you tell me what truck content you want me to be talking about, and we can figure something out here, dude. Juan said, realistically, what numbers are expected from the 2.6 on E85 stock motor Terminator? We haven't tested Terminator yet. Yeah, um, we're doing Terminator. Uh, Terminator's still a ways out. GT500 and Coyote are getting launched first. Terminator is going to be uh, quite a ways out. But I can tell you that that combo you're talking about makes about 700 to 750 with the 2.3. Um, gains are going to be similar to what we're seeing with the Coyote and GT500 platforms. Murphy uh, on YouTube says GT2014 uh, with GT2015 intake manifold from IMRC, lock out any gains? The locking out the IMRCs doesn't gain you anything, um, but uh, the intake manifold, 2014 versus 2015, I don't think there's anything to be had there. I'd look at a 2018 intake for an inexpensive uh, gain, or the GT350 intake works really good too. What have you been seeing on the 18? Because I, I, I see a lot of internet folklore, like people bringing up the 18, but what have you actually seen on the 18 from the tuner side of it that gets a little the, more information the than I do? 18 intake manifold. Yeah. Um, it's, it's worth some power. You know, we're looking at some different programs to offer that intake manifold, um, possibly ported, um, and um, probably most definitely ported. Uh, is a very low cost upgrade for the older cars. So what's that? What's that? Is that, in retrospect, like our Boss 302 intake? Is that going to be a little bit less power, a little bit more power? Or since the Boss has the longer runners that are losing the torque anyway, we, we kind of need to test it, test all of them back to back one day. Gotcha. You have a shout out from uh, Shelby Canada West. So they're okay. saying hey. Hey, what's up? Um, Ken Ingram wants to know what horsepower does our shop truck make? It makes about uh, 650 to the tires and runs mid 11s. Enough so, to scare you if you give it too much and you get on the highway. Yeah, the, uh, the, the truck actually had a Gen 3 on it for a short period of time and we had to pull it off to, uh, to put on another car, but um, it picked up a ton of power. I was going to say, we did a good job hiding it. Nobody knew. Yeah. Where did we run that? That was um, Street. Street yes. car takeover. I also want to know what are the plans for the 18F150, and then someone else says uh, y'all need to get an 18F150 and put one of y'all's Gen 3s or the Roush kit on it. Yeah, um, we're going to be looking at the 18F150 stuff. Um, it's uh, was that the Christmas bonus you were talking about? <sighs> Jesus, Donnie. <laughs> um, we'll be looking at the Roush kit and some other uh, options on the 18F150 for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremiah wants to know what's the main difference between a VMP Gen 1 and 2? So, that's, um, that was a long time ago now we did the Gen 1. Uh, that kind of started back in 2010, 2011, 2012. Donnie, do you, do you know? I was in high school then. Oh, geez. Man, but uh, um, no. I mainly know the big differences between Gen 2 and Gen 2R. Not really Gen 1 and Gen 2. Gen 1 had an elbow that bolted onto the side, and we did some uh, CNC porting on the opening of the blower uh, and included a, a larger, higher-flowing inlet elbow, and that was kind of the Gen 1. Um, it was an existing design that we were able to kind of massage a little bit with some of okay. our tweaks. I love how you use that word massage. Massage, tweaks. You could talk about, be, you, he could literally be talking about clearancing like a training tunnel because he's swapping transmissions and he'd take his five pound sledgehammer and hey, we have to massage this a little bit and boom, boom. <laughs> or he could be talking about like, I don't even know, a stupid a wire connector or something that he just has to move out of the way a little bit. Oh, he's got to massage that. So <laughs> you use the word massage in a very <laughs> wide range that cracks me up. Okay, okay. <laughs> But, okay, so Gen 1 was just massaged a little. Yeah, bolt-on elbow, bolt-on high-flow elbow, and then we came out with the Gen 2, which was the integrated elbow design, which allowed us to do, um, <clears throat> a, basically allowed us to get a ton more air into the supercharger. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's always one of the things we're shooting more for. That's why we came out with the bigger throttle bodies and whatnot. Your blower can only work so hard if, if you let the air into it. 
Who just laughed? What'd you guys read? <laughs> so um, we've got them. Uh, we've got them warmed up pretty good, Donnie. I think we got to get them uh, some results. Some results. Uh, <clears throat> right. So, um, <clears throat> Jeremiah I, says thanks. I got my uh, third GT500 a couple months ago, uh, r black with red stripe 2012 performance pack car, and uh, it's just kind of been sitting uh, under the covered parking um, dormant for a little while. Yeah. And uh, we've just been kind of saving it for the Gen 3 testing. So we finally uh, started doing that. He finally um, let me crack into it yesterday. <laughs> Um, it's a 2012, so we baselined it, and do you know the difference between the 07 to 09 and the 10 to 12 GT500s? Well, I know that the 10 is called the redheaded stepchild, because Ford started trying to use knock sensors and whatnot. And but it still had an iron block. Still had iron block, and, and <clears> the tuning <throat> apparently is a little bit more well, different for you guys. It's a little different, but it's one of those things you know you know what it does so don't you know okay. don't stress about it too much um but otherwise obviously mm. 07 to 09 versus 10 to, to 12 you have a little bit of a power difference right that's the big thing okay 10 starting in 2010 they put a factory kind of a factory cold air on it yeah it had a paper filter you know it was a it was a smaller mass air housing about 105 or so um but it did make a difference and those knock sensors allow them to make the calibration more aggressive from the factory. So they baseline a little higher. Man, we're talking about yeah. 0709, and Chris over there has the video rolling of my arms. Yeah. I'm talking about my hand modeling career. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> so the point of this story is we baselined our 2012 GT500, and it made 486 rear wheel horsepower in stock form. So our 80,000 mile GT500, how is that doing to other... GT 500s you've dealt with since I'm sure 80,000 miles is on a little bit on the higher end for GT 500 guys. Yeah, it's a little on the high end. The clutch was about done in it, so we had a, a used um, clutch laying around the shop, and we threw that in there last week. Um, we knew we were gonna need something to hold up to the dyno abuse. Yeah. But uh, now it's the number 486. It's right in the middle of the average. Okay. So yeah. it's right where it needs to be. Yeah. Not Just low. Healthy. Not high. Um, you know, they rated the car, I think 550 from the factory. So, okay, so you, that's fair. Yeah, if you do the math, uh, it's a little bit uh, underrated. Which Ford has done again and again and again, nonstop. So, whatever. Since the uh, 99 Cobra fiasco. Yeah. Back when you were in elementary school, maybe? 99. Was I in elementary school? <laughs> you have a five year old, don't you? Is five year old in elementary school? Is that that age? Yes. Okay, yes. well, yeah, I was in elementary school. Yes. It's on my um, third year of kindergarten then. <laughs> Murphy wants to know if Alex has his eyes on the black 12 GT500. If Alex has his eyes on it? He has his eyes on it every Monday and Tuesday when he's at the shop. Um, I don't think, I don't think, my, I, don't think I, I can't speak for Alex, but Alex owns um, three cars now. I don't think he's looking for any more. Um, my Hat Rock says, hey guys, I have a 13 GT with a VMP Stage 1, 85 millimeter pulley. I get about 11.5 miles per gallon. Does that seem low? And Alex commented, yes. And Joe says, everyone has their eyes on that GT500. <laughs> so, yes. oh, um, that's a little bit low. I think your foot could be a little heavy. Yeah. And then Random came on and said, my 5 liter uh, 17 F-150 gets 9.2 miles per gallon stock. Ha <laughs> ha. I was going to say, my, my 14, depending on any given day, will average 14 MPG. And it can average all the way up to like 17.9 is the best I've ever gotten it, depending on the day and how I feel. How you feel? How I feel, 100%. Okay. okay. You know, some days you wake up and you get to work in 20 minutes. Some days you wake up, you get to work in 30 minutes. It's just... You don't drive a fast enough vehicle to be... The speeding ticket that I just went to traffic court over the last week <laughs> clearly oh, says you're wrong. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Oh man, that was like number hot, 15. Hot rotting a truck on 31s, 33. 35s? 35s. Whoa, whoa. Oh, 31s is like uh, in that stock tire size oh, range. Man. That's like what, what poor guys are on. I'm trying to be a baller with my fuels in 35s. Come on. So back on topic, Donnie. Oh, back on well, topic. GT500 she's, numbers. the one that pulled me off topic. We were chatting about GT500 and. There's some uh, comments on Facebook just kind of rolling in. I don't know if you want All to. All right, let me, let me talk about our GT500 and we'll catch up to them. So, all right. Someone says, pound Donnie burned. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand what he meant. Anyway, moving on. So, 
We dyno it stock. It did right what it should for an 80,000 mile GT500. In fact, maybe a little better than we thought. So I would ask you what the next step was, but I did all the work, so I suppose I kind of know what the next step was. But what do we do? We slapped on our Gen 2R kit. Our uh, um, basically Gen 2R supercharger, 2.4 pulley, 56 pound injectors, 90 millimeter idler, spark plugs, and a twin jet 67 throttle body. The twin jet 67's kind of been like the old standby. It yeah. idles and drives really That's good. That's reliable. <laughs> yeah, it makes decent power. Um, there's bigger things out there, but most people want the drivability. So, but that is our most common kit that yeah. you slapped onto the car. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, we rated around 800 horsepower, plus or minus, depending on your exhaust setup. <clears throat> and Which, uh, our exhaust setup on that thing's. I don't think it was mod. I know we haven't done anything to it. The previous owner didn't do anything to it, did he? Nope. So it's nope. bone stock. We still got cast manifolds. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Oh, look at that beautiful picture of the underbody of our 80,000 mile GT5. Yeah. We got the catalytic converters, the factory H pipe they started doing in 2011. Yeah, some factory mufflers out back. So just real simple stuff. Um, and uh, so what did it make with the uh, Gen 2R kit? I don't know, would it make tuner? <laughs> <laughs> um, it made 656 rear wheel horsepower. Okay. And I actually, I just loaded our standard uh, file for it. I have, I've data logged it, but I haven't made any tune revisions or touched the tune. So what, what could you pick up or whatnot in the tuner? Or what, what's that mean for me? When yeah. I hear you say you just loaded a tune in it, you left it the way it was, it looked good. What's I mean, that mean? I sent the same tune that uh, I put the same tune in that we send out to our customers every day. Sure. But I didn't make any tweaks to try and get extra performance out of it. Gotcha. So, you know, normally, especially on something with that much power, our customers, you guys, will send in data logs and we'll look at them, you know, maybe add a little bit of timing, maybe adjust air fuels a little bit and try to get a little more horsepower out of it. Sure. Something like that. We might get another 10, 20 horsepower out of it. But through all this testing, I didn't touch the tune at all. Just to just basically uh, swap blowers and run it. Okay. So 656 was our baseline, um, and uh, the torque was about 595, if I recall. And uh, Chris, we're going to hold off on the dynographs until, uh, until we walk uh, through this. <laughs> so our next test uh, was to swap on the Gen 3 blower. You got to see uh, Donnie's muscles swapping it on in the video earlier. Nope. Yep, there we go. Now, this once again, this is an unpowder coated blower. They will be powder coated black uh, for the ones that you buy from us. But I'm um, get very worried about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting on the GT500, the course the blower was silver before, so sure. they might not get too worried. But, uh, but yeah. Bobby Williams says make Donnie famous. We're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we uh, we swapped on that Gen 3 with, what size pulley? I put a 3.0 on it at first. Yeah. We went from a 2.4 on the Gen 2R to a 3.0 on the Gen 3. Do we want to give them these numbers? Like, we got 82 people watching. Are you sure you want to, like, just jump right to it? Oh, well, let's just tell them what the setup is. And oh, then okay, we'll give okay, them the numbers. Good, good. I'm just making sure we're on the same page. We're yeah. 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 Okay, so going from our, our Gen 2R with a 2.4 on it to our Gen 3 with a 3.0, what, what's the boost difference? Oh, well, yeah, we should probably tell you how much boost it was making with the Gen 2R. Okay, so yeah, let's start there. Yeah. What are we making with Gen 2R? It was 2R? making about 18 pounds with Gen 2R. It's a 2.4 upper. Um, it spiked at the very end because of the stock exhaust. It actually spiked up around 19, 20 pounds. Um, most of our customers this day and age don't have stock exhaust. so no. I And they I was, definitely don't have 80,000 pound <laughs> cats. Yeah, yeah. I was talking with Joe about it. I'm like, man, we don't usually see that much boost. But this is kind of a unique situation. It's a totally stock car that's six years old now. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, 18 pounds of boost. You know, we've run the Gen 3 a bunch on Coyote and GT500, and we're always surprised at how much boost the Gen 3 makes. So we put the biggest, one of the biggest pulleys we make yeah. on it. Um, we actually make a 3.3 pulley now. Because of the Gen 3 and the power that it's putting out, we yes. have to pretty much. Yes. But we put the 3.0 on the Gen 3, swapped it on the car, and ran it. Okay. And, so uh, how much less boost were we making by going up to the 3.0? We were making about three pounds less in the mid-range okay. and about two pounds less on the top end. Okay. Yeah. So you'd say less boost. Um, what's power going to do? 
That should go down, hypothetically. Yeah, it actually went up. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> that's uh, when we show you the runs here in a minute, that's run seven versus run nine, um, blue versus green. And <clears throat> we made five horsepower more and uh, about five torque more with the same boost on the Gen 3. So I'm very, very happy about that because it means we've got plenty of room to play. Oh, yeah. We won't have um, Chris, the, the Dynagraph up there, will stop the waiting. Yeah. Well, no, we got to tell him what's on oh, the, okay. we got to tell him the other run. So we can't stop there. Oh, of course not. Yeah. Justin's we've got, favorite saying, pulling it down. <laughs> we, we've got tons of pulleys laying around. We, we, go we do. All the way down to 2 4. So what do we do? We swapped on a 2 8. Um, there's no 2 9. There might be one in the future, but right now, 2 8's the next size down. Sure. So we did a 2 8. Um, keep in mind, all we changed was the pulley. We didn't change the calibration. We didn't change the cold air, the throttle body. Any of those potential restrictions, we left the same. Um, and when we pulleyed down, we picked up 25 rear wheel horsepower and 40 rear wheel torque. You gotta love how the Gen 3 is eating up the torque. Like, we pull it down and it just is throwing torque at yeah. it. Yeah. And, and so what do we give credit for that? Is that uh, the rotor design? Yeah, it's efficiency of the rotor design. They move air at all RPM levels. They, okay. they, they move the air. Um, <clears throat> so, at that point, we kind of ran into another issue. Um, we're out of fuel. So, the trim started going lean at the very end of the run. And uh, we had to save further testing for tomorrow. Um, we were actually doing the polls about 30 minutes before the yeah, show started. I, I was gonna say, we, we were running right up until the show started. But um, you know, these were the numbers we heard from you guys that you wanted to see what it would do boost for boost on a, on a very mild GT500 combination. And uh, we're excited about the results so far. I mean, we've just touched the tip of the iceberg on this oh, yeah. thing. Which, that's why when me and Justin sat down and talked about, okay, hey, what are we going to do with the GT500? We both agreed one of the biggest things we had to show you guys was, okay, exact same car, exact same situation, exact same throttle body, cold air. We're just literally swapping from this blower to that blower. Let's see what the difference yeah. is. At now less boost and then the same boost. Yep. So, um, and the, the less boost is awesome because your air temps. Your IATs are down. Are going to be down. It's a little bit safer. And yeah. of course, you're, you're, you're running less boost, less... Less stress on the engine. Stress, heat, stress yeah. on the crank, everything. Yeah, to make the same power. All right, um, so there's our, our dyno graph going up. Oh, did you already yeah. take it down? Oh, man, you can't take it down. You, throw it, you can throw it back up. We can study it a little bit. Yeah. So the, uh, the red horsepower and torque line is the stock supercharger. And, uh, and then we start going into the blue and green graphs, which are the Gen 2R and then the Gen 3. As you can see, power is pretty much the same with a 2.4 on the Gen 2R and a 3.0 on the Gen 3. That Gen 3 is just barely working. Yeah, so three pounds less boost, we're making the same power. And, and 3.0 is actually the stock pulley size on a GT500. They're huge. <laughs> <laughs> every, time, every time I open the hood on a stock car, like a stock Roush phase car, I'm like, oh my God, what is that thing? Because I'm just not used to, you know, cars around, around the shop just aren't that we don't have that big of pulleys ever yeah but yeah here we are with our our gen 3 slapping the biggest pulley that we have on it and making the same making a little bit more yeah yeah making another five horsepower and five torque same calibration i actually went back and looked at the data logs the tunes uber conservative 14 15 degrees 0.82 lambda all right we can take down the the dynagraph they've already screenshot it and so, and ogled. We so okay tune is very conservative yeah, we should probably go through some so questions. So once again, what's... Oh, okay, yeah, we probably do have a lot of questions stacking up. Let me scroll down a little. Bring your laptop over here. Oh, man. Hopefully it doesn't die this week. All right, that's still talking about old stuff. Difference between Gen 2, Gen 2 R. Um, all right, we'll just jump up here because I know I haven't answered that. 630 wheel horsepower S550 Roush charge. Stay with 373s or change the gear. MT82. Nick, we kind of did that on our car. I was going to say, that's, I remember doing that on Track Attack early yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I can't say it's better to have less gear in it for traction, but 
you're still not going to have a whole lot of traction on the street on street tires. Man. Um, there's Bobby Williams saying, make me famous. Is there an official VMP calendar of events that VMP will attend? Um, well, we'll get to that. Yeah. We, should, we should mention that on the show, too. Yeah. Um, Jim Roberts, thanks for the help last weekend. I guess you helped him last weekend. Oh, yes. Jim was racing his truck. Um, Brian Mockeridge, who has the, uh, the F100 with the GZ500 swap. Uh, when are the tunes coming out for the 18s? Brian, um, we're preparing the press release, but they're actually available now. So oh, they're on the uh, website now. Well, um, they're in the process of being put on the oh, website. Okay. The price is a little bit higher because there's a lot of tuning that goes into the 18s. It's going to be 249 for the level one in A tunes. Um, and of course, we're just going to start with in A tunes because there's there's not a whole lot of blown cars out there yet. Um, it's worth but, it. I've driven our 18 before. But yeah. <laughs> if you give us a call, Brian, we can get you uh, talked with our sales and support department. We can get you a tune order in for an 18. Um, Israel wanted to know what he missed. Um, I don't know where he jumped in, dude, but we're just talking about Gen 3 stuff. Uh, we got stock GT500. We've just been doing comparison of bone stock versus Gen 2R versus our Gen 3 and running over all the numbers. We'll get back to it, I'm sure, after yeah. we answer some questions. J um, Jacob's kind of uh, baiting us a little bit uh, how the new TVS will stack up against the new Gen 3 Whipple. Um, I, don't have, uh, I don't have any uh, concerns there that... Uh, our stuff performs very, very well. Okay, there, um, I like your answer. Um, is Israel, okay. Um, that was Israel. Um, Phil McCracken, what's the highest horsepower vehicle you've ever tuned? Uh, a thousand plus, uh, you know? Come on, you do that every day. Yeah, uh, I mean. You gotta have some big impressive number. I mean, you know, we've had some 11, 12, 1300 rear wheel horsepower stuff. I mean, I don't know. We don't really keep track of it that way. You know, it's as a tuner, it's more about what you know you can do with any given combination and how you can make it all work right. So, um, you don't really count horsepowers too much. Okay. Well, maybe uh, Joe and Alex are watching. If you guys have some stupid high, impressive <laughs> number that you, you've always remembered, maybe go on there and comment and <sighs> let people know. John Pavia, congratulations on the eight-second run at uh, Bradenton last weekend. He says Gen Three on my O3 Cobra. Let's hey, do it. Hey man, let's do it. Drop the car off. Let's Come do on. it. Um, um, uh, Dakota. So because the Gen Three makes more power with less boost, is it because of how efficient it is? Yes. So that's that 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 breaks down to our rotors. Yes, it's, that's the rotors in the Gen Three are much more efficient. Um, they're higher twists. They're a totally different design. In supercharger design, we get into something called L over D. Okay. Do you know tell, what that is? Tell, tell me what that means in mechanic design. Length over diameter. And oh, I know all about that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. Right, come back, come back to the series oh, stuff. Oh, man. Uh, oh, yeah. No. yeah. Carrie, you had like a five-second delayed reaction. Like, you're back there reading, and it took you a full five <laughs> seconds before you were like, oh. oh. All right, so, L, L and D. Uh, super, in supercharger design, length and <laughs> diameter is, uh, is optimized on the 2650 oh. for the best possible performance. Okay. Yeah. Oh, all right, I got to calm down from that. That was good. I'm like patting myself on the back. That was good. Um, Alex chimed in. He dynoed 1,100 horsepower turbo car. Nice. Um, all right. Any... So on the Gen 3, how restrictive is the adapter plate and the GT500 throttle body against the 160 monoblade? So that's actually <laughs> pretty good question he asked because that's what we were running today. Yeah. So um, Marshall mm. says y'all should order the Gen 3 without the black powder coating. Well, we got a couple of them here, Marshall. Yeah, we can work some out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, throttle body. Adapter throttle body plate adapter. Versus the 160 or the 173. Yeah, I, uh, you know, we're planning on doing that test tomorrow, going to the bigger throttle body. I definitely feel like we were running out of throttle body with the 2.8 pulley when we made that uh, 680, uh, 686 number. Um, <clears throat> we could even go back to the 3.0 pulley when we swap on the 160 and see if we come out yeah. higher. I mean, obviously, it wasn't that big of a restriction having the adapter plate going on the Gen 3 because we still made more power at less boost. Yeah, Which, but a lot of that is credit to the rotors. Until we test it, we don't know for sure. 
Okay. Well, reason number 5,602 to make sure you like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Make sure you come back, check the back next week. We'll talk about some of that, obviously. Uh, we'll be at Texas 2K next week, so we'll be talking oh, yeah. about how it we, how from we the racetrack. That? We're, we're going to figure all that out. Okay. Will they still see us? Uh, I, have, I have, like, fans. I don't need them to go a week without me. Oh, Donnie, Donnie, Donnie. Yes, we'll make sure they see you somehow, Donnie. Okay. All right. You guys don't have to worry. It's all right. Oh, God. Um, look. Uh, we have a couple of comments over here. Uh, YouTube comments? Yeah. Yeah, let's hit those. Um, so, guys, I have a question for Stock 5.0, 2015 model. What would be too much horsepower? What's a high, safe horsepower range? I keep hearing 900 is fine for a weekend racer. I would like your thoughts on this. Well, how many weekends do you want to race? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let, and let's, let's say, are we, let's, let's talk about rear wheel horsepower or crank. Yeah. Because at the crank, 900 is... Probably still a little unsafe, but it's pushing it a 900, lot. Nine hundred wheel is definitely, you know, it, it's it, not going more than a weekend probably. On a fifteen up motor, if you've got good fuel, I feel pretty good about six fifty to seven hundred long term. Any anything higher than that, it's just a matter of how long you can get away with it. Yeah. You know, seven fifty, eight hundred on a stock motor, stock fifteen up motor, you know, I think you can run it for for a while, but be prepared to build it too. Yeah. Tony says he loves the recent 15 plus blower install video we did. Uh, he wants to know why do we have to take a grinder to block at the three points and why it couldn't be designed around it? So, it's a good question. It's a great question. Um, <clears throat> that was actually a better design. Now, you may say, why was it a better yeah, design? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Um, superchargers put stress on the crankshaft. Yep. You know, and uh, you've got bending forces. Mm -hmm. So here's your here's your front main bearing, yep. and here's your crankshaft snout, and um, so you can put the belt loads really close to the front main bearing, or you can put them way out here. Okay, which so that gives you leverage, which we don't want leverage on our crankshaft. No, <laughs> no, um, and. Uh, the when so vmp supercharger system shares uh the belt system and some other components with roush's and when roush designed this back in 2011 they wanted to put those loads on the inner shiv closest to the block yeah and uh and that was basically for long-term durability because all their stuff is designed around 150,000 mile durability yeah so, you know, to cut a couple of tabs, it's a little, you know, a couple of bosses, it's a little more work, but we have never broken a crankshaft snout with a VMP blower and we've spun them 27,000 RPM. I mean, it's just not something we have to worry about. Um, Einar wants to know, will an upside down supercharger be the going forward on these new boat port and fuel and direct fuel engines like the 18 Coyote? Um, the upside down supercharger, it's got positives and, and negatives. Um, I don't know that it'll be the going thing for 18 up. It's, it's got some good and some bad stuff to it, like anything. So 18 up is really going to be dependent on a whole other set of variables because it's a much different motor. Um, the direct injection gets you certain things that you didn't have before, but there's certain trade-offs, like you were talking about, the room in the valley. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. Uh, Marshall wants to know, no, sorry. Freedom wants to know if Alex will be at 2K. Yes, Alex will be there. How? We Marshall got people commenting know, on our video asking if other people will be Marshall there. Marshall wants to know if you'll be live at Texas 2K. Yes, we're working on that. We're looking into that now. It'll be like the Sunday morning shows where they're doing the news in like New York Square and everybody's behind them with the signs trying to get on TV. Slabbed, I know, right? That would be awesome. That's exactly, that's what we're, we're going to broadcast from so, inside the RV and everyone can be out the window trying to get in. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Slab Shack says, um, my short-term fuel trims are in the 0 .80 range since the fuel, since the full exhaust on my 14 GT500. Is that normal? It was closer to 1.0 and high 0 .90 without the headers. Headers should not change your fuel trims that much. Um, I'd look at your long term, see if they were different before and after. There could have been a correction that was affecting it and now isn't anymore. Uh, Alexander says, I have a 13GT with a Roush supercharger with E85. What is the smallest pulley I can use on a stock motor? 
Mm. For how long? <laughs> I I'd stay a, I'd say a seventy five. You got the extra octane of E eighty five to as kind of a buffer, and seventy five will make about six eighty to seven thirty at the wheel. You got you done on YouTube I am there? Done on the tube. I've got Blake on Facebook asking, is the Gen 3 available for 03, 04 Cobras? Um, was not quite yet. We're getting to it. When are, when are we expecting to see well, those? Basically, we're just going to say June. Okay. You so, know, June, June Blake. Back. Yeah. Um, Phil McCracken, same, strangest coyote swap you have tuned. I know the guys in the tuning office did a rock bouncer with a coyote swap, or it was like a mud truck or something. What, what say, have you seen? I'm going to say airboat. The airboat would be sweet. Yeah. Um, I mean, like an F100, like a 1951 or 52 F100. Well, the I mean, swap. It's, you know, that's not really strange. It's a Ford. Yeah. You know what would be really strange? Uh, E350 oh, Econo line, four-wheel drive, work van. Oh, man. That's another story. Make sure you like, subscribe, and you go see that old video where I try to convince him to build one of those for probably 10 minutes of the show. Yep. Um, yep. So. All right. Craig sent you a... Big long one, holy cow. Um, Justin, since they don't make a Mustang kit, what's your thoughts on the Magnuson 2650 and the innovative interchangeable front inlets for single or dual throttle body? Can we expect something like this from BMP? It looks like the Gen 3 wants all the air. Yeah, I mean, the more air you can get into the supercharger, the better, Craig. Um, it's just a matter of, we wanted something that would fit a Mustang package and that our older customers would be able, our customers with the older product would be able to easily upgrade to. So, uh, you know, we'll look, we, we look at front inlet as it becomes necessary, but on the GT500 platform and even the Coyote platform, 11 to 17 Coyote, we don't, we don't feel like it's necessary right now. Okay. Luke says that, yes, we should build my van and we should manual swap it. Well, um, that's um, that's one fan you got there, Don. I have I have one. I need more support for my van build. Um, Owen says he's currently running around 800 crank on a 17 S5550 with a Roush Phase Two. He's got Cook setters, a Borley exhaust, and our mapping on UK 98.99 fuel. How much of a nitrous shot would be safe for weekend racing? Car is a daily driver. Um, safe's a relative word there, in my <laughs> opinion. <laughs> yeah, 800 crank. That's a pretty big. Pretty big number yeah, you're... Um, on a stock motor. I mean, I would say like a 30 shot. What's that in jet sizes? Oh, I don't even know. I'd it's have like to look a, at the jet chart. It's like a 22 jet or something. Yeah. I ran a 30 shot on my V6 back in the day. Of course you did. Yeah. No yeah. comment. Uh, screw you, Mr. Van. <sighs> um, did, did you also have a cannon intake on it as soon as you bought it? No, I had the, the hardware store special. I made my own intake. Of course you did. And then I what else the, would you expect out of a V6 Mustang? Owner? And then I would I put the K&N sticker on, on, the, on the air filter on the, on the PCV2. And of course you had, you had the Nitrous Express sticker on it before it ever had nitrous on it, didn't it? I had actually, no, I had a license plate frame. Oh, well, I would, I would start making fun of him more, but since my truck has a Nitrous Express plate frame what? on it. Yeah, I, I put nitrous on a customer's car and there's plate flame oh, frames man. laying around. I put one on my truck. All right, let's get some questions here. Billy, um, you could spray a little bit of nitrous wet through the rotors. Wouldn't be a problem. Um, Alex Alexander, if you guys had one choice between centrifugal blower or twin screw on 18 Mustang 5.0. I know TVS, I know. Yeah, the conversation ends there. But between the two above, any pros and cons to consider one or the other on his 18? Just some opinion. So I look at this stuff from a drivability perspective, a maintenance perspective, um, tunability perspective. And I just, I'm not a huge fan of centrifugals. They can make power, but there's a lot of other piping and stuff um, that runs through the engine bay. Some of them have belts that are mounted really far out on the crankshaft, like we were talking about earlier. And unlike our, our TBS kits, we have seen cranks fail because of centrifugal blowers. And it's not, it's not like it's, it's, it's a, a one-time thing. Yeah, you've, it's, you've, it's, you've heard it. It's more of a race application where they're running sure. a lot of boost, but it's definitely more prone to happening. Um, so, you know, centrifugals will make power, but I'm just not a, not a huge fan of them. Um, Jared wants to know, will our fuel system upgrade kit on the site now work with the Gen 3 for an 03 Cobra? Um, yeah, that'll work. Okay. Um, Slowpoke says, Roush Phase 2 going to 79 pulley. Do you recommend changing spark plugs or just to run the ones he has with his Phase 2? 
Uh, how much horsepower will it make on stock motor? And I mean bone stock, no exhaust upgrade. So um, I would do a set of brisk uh, RR12YSs gap down to about 32, 30, 32 thou. Um, and as far as the horsepower, uh, 11 to 14, um, low sixes, 15 to 17, you should be able to get into the mid sixes. You will need a good flowing throttle body to take full advantage of that 79 millimeter pulley like the VMP twin jet 67. Which the brisks are, are great for like daily drivers because shoot, that's what I took out of your, I don't, man, I don't even remember when. Uh, I took them out of your F-150. How many miles did we get out of those in the 20, F-150? 20, 25. Yeah, we got like 20, 25,000 miles out of them and the truck goes to the track, it races, it gets daily driven, everything else. So that's that's pretty good. So Tom Pogue. Um, oh, did I? I missed yeah, 79 is a little bit aggressive for 91. Uh, I wouldn't want to see you doing a lot of racing on it. Um, um Phil McCracken says my E350 camper van with a 5.0 is yeah. great. I got two. I have two followers. Yeah. Uh, Joe uh, wants to know when are we going to throw a supercharger on a GT350? That ship has sailed. I was going to say, we, we traded that thing yeah. in. She's long gone. Yeah. So, uh, jo Jason, uh, 6R80 versus 10R80. You know, the 10R80, we don't know what it's going to do with big horsepower. I can tell you traditionally, big horsepower needs less gear ratio um, and less gears. So, I think 6R80 for 700 plus wheel horsepower is a, is a solution. And as you get up into the eight, 900 rear wheel horsepower range, definitely looking at power by the hours, uh, new re-gearing setup is not a bad idea. What are they calling that? The 4R200. Okay. So four, four forward gears, reverse, and 200 newton meters of torque or something okay. like that. Yeah, that, that'll, that'll be cool. I'm excited to see those. Uh, JP says, can a built three valve with the Department of Boost manif manifold in Gen 3 make 700 plus on 93? I I don't want to like question, you know, I don't want to make spec speculate too much on 93 because yeah. it's poor 93, who knows, but uh, on good fuel on a built three valve, yeah, I'd say you can make 700 plus all day long. Carrie, what'd you have over on YouTube? Um, Nate says, what's the absolute easiest supercharger to install, centrifugal or otherwise, the one with the least cutting and fabrication? Do you know? Uh, that's a tough one because, you know, cutting and fabrication, it's just, it's a matter of what you want to endure. Um, you know, the lining everything up on a centrifugal supercharger and running all the charge pipes and stuff like that, that's not a whole lot of fun either. I mean, you've worked on some cars like that. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, someone says a 5.0 van versus Nitro's V6 built off. <laughs> oh, you still have your, you still have your V6. It has no engine. Oh, I have the roller. We can make that happen. Oh man. I uh, yeah, I don't want to put a V6 back in that thing just to test it against my race van. <laughs> Too much work. Um, Einer says, uh, living in Iceland, the fuel 99% of cars use is like 91 US octane, 93 octane is available on few stations, but you never know if it is old or new. Will Torco be good enough to run aggressive tune on old 93? Yeah, Torco. Run some Torco, some octanium. Um, That'll, that'll help a lot. And then Random says, what will a 1750 F-150 regular cab short bed run on the quarter? Um, we'll find out what Joe's runs. Yeah. Is that with how much power did he say? He didn't say. 5.0, that's all he said. Okay. So, um, what are the questions we have on YouTube? That's it right now. Okay, so we got a bunch of more questions on Facebook. Yeah, a lot of a lot of comments. The main question is, Billy's want to know any point in the future would VMP be willing to make an upside down blower? Which obviously you know a lot better than I do, but I haven't heard any talk of it. If there's a if there's a design benefit to making an upside down blower, we'll look at it. But you know we're we're happy with our stuff right now, the way it performs. He came back with uh, 385 horsepower, 387 torque for that uh, F-150. Yeah, what did Joe's run, you know, before he put the supercharger on it? I don't know. I never went with him I to the track, unfortunately. I think it's probably in the 13s if you can get traction. I know I did see a guy on uh, the F-150 page that I follow with 5.0s. He was running like 
with his his eighteen single cab tuned with headers and other stuff. He was running twelve eight. Wow, that's rolling out for a truck. Yeah. Um. All right. I don't see. So Dorian saw the article on the one thousand horsepower twenty eighteen. Any reason for needs to use two regulators separating DI and PI? Um, my guess is that the DI system, um, first of all, you want to run a DI system. You want to run the feed side of a DI system a little bit higher pressure. And there's also some pulses and reflections that the DI system introduces into the port fuel injector system that they're probably trying to isolate. Um, John. John asked earlier about using the adapter plate in the elliptical with the Gen 3. Um, yeah. You could do that. The adapter plate um, was really meant for the 67s and even the 72s, but um, you'd have to do a little bit of porting on it to make the elliptical fit perfectly, but you could do it. Uh, but John, I would just get, I would sell your elliptical with your 2.3 liter and I would get um, the 160 or the 173. And the 160 is really meant to be the street throttle body. Uh, you got one on YouTube over there? I got a couple. All uh, right. Jacob says, 2018 Mustang. Interested in more 2018 tuning knowledge? What do you guys like, dislike? Watch Tuning Tuesday and talk to Joe and Alex about it. We're going to get really in-depth with 2018 tuning. Um, it's an awesome car. It responds well to tuning, uh, especially the automatic transmission. But um, save, that for, save that for Tuning Tuesday. JR? Tuesday at 1.30. Okay, JR says, GT500 motor, what do you think is more reliable, 5.4 or 5.8? Ooh. We've had this talk. Yeah. I'll take the 5.4 any day. I know it. Yeah. Uh, Kamana says, 2014 Mustang, stock motor with Gen 3, what projected horsepower numbers? Stock motor with Gen 3, 650 at the wheels. Uh, Slap Shack says, will the twin 72 throttle body make a return? He always asks that, uh, I think. Huh? Um, uh, the Twin 72 kind of falls into a weird, uh, weird spot now. The, uh, the 67 does very, very well. And much beyond that, you need to go into a monoblade. So I don't see the 72 really being, you know, it bridges a gap, but it's, I don't think it's a gap that many people are interested in. Uh, Jacob says, what do you guys think about the 18 with the new MT82 D4 with a set of 410 gears? And he said, and thanks, he will tune in on Tuesday. Okay. Um, Scott Hasty. Okay. Oh, you got, you got more? I have one more. Keep going through YouTube since they disappear at the end of the night. Yeah, Jose says, the injector help on the 2017 Mustang GT with GT350 manifold and JLT air with headers or not. What? That's what he said. <laughs> Hey, throw all the bolt-ons at it. Um, I mean, GT350 manifold, a cold air will help. Uh, we got more on YouTube, Carrie? They're coming in now. Uh, when using Octane Booster, how to calculate how much more PSI to push? Any based calculations? Uh, you got to look at the tune, too. Um, see how much timing you're running. You can, you can trade boost and timing but, and Octane, but you can't max out any of them. Yeah. Um, Let's see here. Chase says, "What kind of power increase? What kind of power increase and in power on a 15.50 CAI intake and axle back exhaust? Is it worth a tune?" You're gonna feel more of a benefit from the tune than you will from those two other mods. Yeah. Uh, Danny says, "GT500 5.4 swap a E350." <laughs> uh, oh, good. Jeremy says, the comments apparently no longer disappear. I get a notification when logging in. They do disappear once uh, we go live because they've disappeared in the past. They still have been. Even on Tuesday, they disappeared. Um, the Black Mamba, can't wait to come back from overseas in August and get my car to run a Gen 2R, making 670 rear. Hopefully, we'll be attending some events with you guys next year. Cool. Random yeah. someone says, have either of you driven the supercharged F-150? How bad of issues in traction well, of course they've driven it that's, that's that's like his daily driver half the time mm -hmm. i've, I've, I've it. taken it home plenty carrie's driven it we've all driven it we pass her around um but jumping I, on the highway you like seriously i one time i looked over my shoulder there's a semi that's not getting over in the far right lane my lane ends i jumped on it and that thing doing like 70 
tried breaking them loose and getting squirrely on me. Luckily, I had traction control on. Rick but. says, uh, at what point do you recommend sleeving a 15 plus block? 800 plus, 900. I mean, you can stretch it to 900 to 1,000, but if you have Not the choice, <laughs> if you have a choice, just sleeve it. Joe says, it sounds like tuning Thursday. <laughs> uh, Einer says, Thursday. do you guys offer like a 100 oct tune? Uh, here in Iceland, there is available to buy 55 gallon drum that is like 93 mixed with tooling. Toluene. Toluene. Yeah. And some other stuff sold as around 100 octane. Yeah, we can tune for that. You know, check with us and make sure it's something that's going to be worth it. If you're naturally aspirated, you might just want to mix in, you know, a little bit here and there. Um, All right. Keep going, Carrie. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Uh, Gen 3 blower on a Gen 3 Coyote with 72 mil and 15%. Uh, Gen 3 Coyote, that's going to be 18 up. Uh, you know, TBD. He, Jose comes back and says, I already have the GT350 intake manifold and JLT cold air intake and headers. I'm asking if injectors, if injectors help with this modification. You're only going to, injectors are only going to help if you're maxing out the injectors you have right now. I wonder if that's one of our customers. Because I had a, we did a Jose that was here. He had a GT350 intake that I put a, I put, he went back to the stock throttle body because of obviously our, our tunability on GT350 throttle bodies. I wonder if that's our old customer. It's funny. Right, I'd go ahead and hit Facebook. Uh, Facebook is... So. It's actually like one minute past seven, <clears throat> so... Uh, we'll go real quick through, through the existing questions then. Um, uh, Larry Doran, he's the one that I see on my calendar all the time. Yep. Cannot wait for my 14 build sleeved L&M coming up. See you guys in two weeks. I will see you. Um, if you're NA, I don't know that those header sizes are going to make a big difference. Uh, Charles Kent Bodie... Um, I think you've probably got a 2.5 on your car right now if you got a Gen 1. You could go down to a 2.4. Um, let's see, Daniel Newman. Um, you could send us a data log. That's a phase one kit with your tune. Um, you could send us a data log, but I think your time would be better spent doing some upgrades like a booster and a pulley because a phase one is a pretty mild combination. Um, I'd, I'd do some upgrades and then send us a data log once you get those new upgrades on. Uh, let's see, Scott Hasty, how much horsepower will the new 160 millimeter throttle body support? So, uh, I have seen a thousand rear wheel horsepower on the 160. I don't think you have to worry, Scott. All of it. Um, if I had a boat. Yeah, yeah. You want everything from Austin Howell. You're welcome, John. And, okay, Jose. So, 2007 GT500, 91 octane. CNL intake, man, that's old school on a GT500. <laughs> um, can I run Torco on a daily? Uh, yes, you can run Torco. Do not overmix the additives. If it says one can per 15 gallons, don't go any higher than that. Yeah. It's a very diminishing returns and it does weird stuff to your fuel system and your plugs. Yeah, it definitely does weird stuff to the uh, plugs. I've pulled out some plugs that were, I, looked uh, like they were spray painted orange. Um, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit uh, just these couple real quick. Billy Brantley, um, <laughs> you should have him let him read it, Donnie. What's Shop. the 69 millimeter upper? Uh, Billy, I would, if you're shooting for that much horsepower, I'd get a 15% lower on it and uh, probably run like a 75 upper. Um, slow poke, uh, yeah, I think you could go mid 10s. Um, so that's good. I think that's all the questions we're going to take for this evening. I yeah. do want to update you on uh, some of the event schedule stuff that we're talking about. We are going to be at Texas 2K next week. Um, we'll be there Thursday through Sunday, and uh, we'll be racing. Um, and then after that, Ponies in the Smokies. We'll have the VMP Mobile Dino Jet set up at Ponies in the Smokies for tuning and installs. Uh, yours truly will be swapping parts, pulleys, tunes, cold airs. You can do that at Texas 2K too. bodies. Yeah, Texas 2K though, we're not going to have the dyno, no. we're going to be racing, we'll be able to do some, uh, we'll be able to help out some of our customers, but um, we won't have a dyno. At Ponies in the Smokies, we will have uh, a full-blown dyno set up, um, and we'll be able to tune on the spot. You can schedule a dyno tune with us ahead of time, and, uh, and then we'll also be doing Shelby Fest and Carlisle. When's Shelby Fest? Uh, it's the... End of April, beginning of May. Okay. Yeah. 
We'll be bringing a lot of Gen 3s to Shelby Fest for the installs there. Nice. Um, all right, I think that's it. Are we going to Texas 2K? Yep. Yep. All right, well. That's it. Thank you for uh, watching. Share, subscribe, and um, we'll have uh, more GT500 Gen 3 results for you next week. That's it. See you next week. We'll talk about L&D. That's it. It's my new favorite term.